Okay, this is the uh, quick introduction to the Sky CNG Sky Pro software uh, developed with our partner LPG Tech. Um, you can see the version at the top. We have already um, dis clicked on disconnect. Uh, when you first connect, um, this will be blinking in the bottom right. It's looking for a connection. We are not connected to a vehicle right now. So uh, you may see a couple of limitations as we're going through here because uh, some things won't populate if we're not connecting to an ECU. But uh, for the purposes of this video, it should do everything we need. Um, anyway, um, so let's jump right into it. <clears throat> You'll always uh, start at the settings tab. You can click program and read settings in or if you want to load a file. Uh, you just click on here and then you can look in your database uh, if you've already converted that type of vehicle before or if you're getting a configuration file from us. Uh, you know, we can send you something to give you a good head start. Each of these, okay, we gotta love Windows. Um, each of these, uh, you, know, you can double click on what it means and here in English, and uh, we're always, you know, there may be some typos or something like that, we're always improving it, but this is uh, as American English as. Uh, uh, we can get it right now. That um, makes it really easy to use the, the software. Just explains what's going on. Um, this, for example, the RPM signal wire, you're typically going to get it from the negative engine coil, so it's going to be 3.6 volts. That's going to be standard. Um, if you uh, if you were to get it from the cam directly or the PCM, then you you wouldn't really change it either. Uh, very few times you're going to have to adjust this voltage. Um, sequential, pretty standard, um, gives you some options, but these are for you know maybe some some LPG settings or some really rare engines that are more commonly found in Europe, which is obviously where you know this was uh, first developed uh, before Sky CNG started working with LPG Tech. Uh, petrol injection controlled by ground or by positive. By ground is the most common, but there are some vehicles out there. Uh, like Nissan, for example, uh, some of the Nissan Sentras and the Nissan vans and the trucks, um, they have an inverted polarity uh, for their uh, cutoff injection. And so you'll just, instead of adjusting the, the wires, which is the way you had to do it in the, in the past, uh, you would just simply click here and our ECU interprets it you know, with an inverted polarity. Renix control you'll never use. CNG tech algorithm. This is a, there's a standard algorithm, but tech is always going to be selected. Uh, there are lots of different injectors out there. Um, let me get out of that. We always use the HANA 2000, uh, the 1.2, 1.9 ohm. <clears throat> That's what you'll select for us. A neat little feature here is uh, if if cylinder three, for example, is giving you trouble, you can click on it, and uh, when everything's connected, you can always uh, you can block it out and leave it not working. It'll switch on. It'll it'll work with petrol, you know, gasoline instead. Uh, you can also block out, filter out the extra injection. <clears throat> we don't really see this here on American engines or the the vehicles that we use in America. Uh, it's very very rare, so you'll never really have to mess with any of this. The adaptation. Um, on modern cars, this is always going to be on to OBD. You can do MAP or OBD, but the OBD is much more efficient and effective, so that's what we're going to use. Um, acceleration, uh, again, you know, we're not going to be uh, using uh, the acceleration option, so just leave this on off. Uh, this is mainly developed for cold climates and um, mainly for. Uh, for use during idle speed when it's a cold engine, and uh, I'm not going to bother explaining everything to you. But uh, here in the USA, when you crank up, we idle on petrol, we idle on uh, you know the gasoline until uh, certain parameters are met, and then it switches over to CNG. But for us, we're not going to have to worry about that uh, about using this, this uh, switch off function or the acceleration option. <laughs> The reducer temp sensor, 
Uh, always leave it to 4K7. Gas temp sensor. That will be a 4K7 as well. And uh, gas level sensor. There are different ones that you can use, but we are going to use the Hall Falling. And this is where you go to calibrate it. Um, it's not showing it right now because I'm not connected. But uh, when you bring this up, it'll let you calibrate the fuel gauge on the dashboard. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, that way you can control uh, how the LEDs uh, go from you know all full down to the red LED showing on the dashboard switch. Switch over sound, we always leave this on though. That's just, you know, if, you're, if you ever forget what these mean or whatever, you can just double click on it. So every time uh, a cylinder switches over, it's going to beep, you know, but that would just get really annoying. We're not going to worry about it. <coughs> but you have the opportunity, you know, or you have the option if you want to. Switch over to gas, reduce your temperature. Uh, 35 degrees, you know, that's pretty typical. 35, 40 degrees is where we like it. Gas temperature, we like it a little bit colder. Minimum gas temperature required to switch to gas. All right, pretty self explanatory. So, anytime it gets over negative 20, uh, it'll allow you to switch over to gasoline. Uh, injectors heating. This is mainly uh, th this is a LPG setting, uh, so don't worry about it. Some people get confused and think, oh, this is good for my CNG injectors, but this is only an LPG setting, so uh, so don't worry about it. Fuel overlapping. Um, you can use this. Uh, this simply contributes a little bit of uh, gasoline, you know, or petrol, if. Uh, if you if you have a rough idle if it, or if it's switching over really rough, um, you know you don't like it. It's a little bit you know too much for your uh, for your taste. You can move this up to you know I'd say between one to one point five is probably the most you'll ever need. Very few vehicles use this. Uh, you know especially these big vehicles. During the transition, uh, our system and w with everything that we put on there, it's usually very smooth. So very rarely you'll have to use this. Uh, switching over uh, from RPM, so you've, it's going to do it here uh, through acceleration. Once you clear 1,200 RPMs for the first time, assuming that your reducer is an adequate temperature, uh, all these other parameters are met, it'll switch over. Switch over one by one. Or it can do you know two at a time or all at once. Uh, we suggest using one of these. Just makes it a little bit smoother, a little bit easier. You won't feel any, uh, you won't feel any jerks or anything like that. Switch over time three seconds is pretty adequate. Fast start. Um, this makes it to where, well, let's just click on here and I'll show you. Uh, th this is just uh, making it crank on C and G, and I don't know why the highlight isn't coming up. I've got a really sensitive mouse, so maybe that's what it is, or maybe it's because it's just so self-explanatory, uh, it doesn't really need it. So anyway, you can turn that on. Uh, accessory to ignition switch or RPM, but we'll just put usually it on uh, ignition switch. That way, when uh, when you first crank up the vehicle, as long as the engine is warm enough, it'll run on CNG. It'll crank up on CNG. Uh, min minimum gas temperature. Again, these are all pretty self-explanatory, and this is when the engine is going to switch over to petrol. You know, to switch over to gasoline. If you ever see um, if you ever have any, you know, issues. So if uh, if the gas temperature gets below zero degrees uh, Celsius, then it will switch over to gasoline until things warm up again. 
Um, if this ever does happen, it's typically because the reducer is not getting enough uh, engine water or the coolant, you know, is not moving through the reducer fast enough and it's not, uh, you know, keeping it warm enough uh, for the output CNG. Uh, so, and you can also set the minimum pressure for the reducer. So if your gas pressure gets below, you know, whatever you want, I usually put it on Oh, it's not letting me go up above one bar because I'm not connected to anything. But I usually put it on about 1.3, 1.5 bar. Uh, and then also the minimum uh, gas pressure time. Uh, these are all related. If, if they're When they're highlighted in colors like that, it basically means um, they both have to be met for it to switch over to gasoline. And when it does it, you're going to get a buzz, and it's going to switch over to gasoline. And it's not going to let you switch back to CNG until you push the button. And uh, obviously, if these are staying below that number, it won't. Even if you push the button, it won't let you come back. Uh, the maximum gas pressure. Our output pressures are usually between two and a half and three bar. Um, so you know that's where it's going to be. And if it gets too high, uh, we can just set this to four bar. Uh, then it'll switch over to gasoline and shut down the system as well. Minimum gas RPM, maximum gas RPM, these are all uh, pretty self-explanatory as well. Um, and then, uh, so if you want it to, the, the difference in the things on the right side and the left side here is when this switches over, so let's say you get below 500 RPMs, it'll switch over to gasoline, so obviously on idle. If you've got a really low idling engine, uh, or for that matter, you can make this whatever you want. If any time you fall below 800 RPMs, you want it to idle on gasoline for whatever reason, that's what you do. Then when you get back over 800 RPMs, it switches over to CNG automatically. Uh, maximum gas RPM here, maximum engine load. I usually set the engine load to about 80%. You know, you can go 80, 90%. <coughs> Anytime you get above that, it's mainly because you're hauling something, you're going up a hill, you know, you're really revving up the engine, you need all the power you can get. So you know, we're going to switch you over to petrol. When you fall below these parameters, it switches automatically back over to CNG, and it does it very, very quickly. It doesn't do it one, one by one with a delay or anything like that. Uh, fast switch off. We we'll always leave that to no. Uh, you can leave it on and it's not going to hurt anyway. Then the RPM dropout time. Uh, this is mainly because uh, some vehicles they show an RPM signal drop, um, or they show a, a zero RPM signal during a cutoff. Uh, this is mainly mainly for like manual transmissions. So if you don't have a manual transmission, uh, you know, don't worry about this at all. Just leave it on 0.5 and you know leave it on the default, and you're and you're fine. Um, but uh, if you uh, and it's it's mainly just for a setting when, during the manual transmission. This is kind of an advanced training. Uh, we can go over that with you if you ever do a manual vehicle. Okay, car parameters, just informational stuff. We're going to be switching this to miles pretty soon. Calibration. This is where you do the auto calibration. typical map tab. I like the bars chart. And here you can see the sliders. This is an idle slider. This is a mixture slider. You don't even have to go into the big confusing grids. Uh, grids like this that get populated in other softwares. We totally, we don't even bother with those. Um, we'll show you in another training you know, what all this does. But this is just a way to view your fuel trims to see how you know, level they are. Uh, there's different ways, two-dimensional, three-dimensional. You know, there's nothing on it right now, so it's going to look pretty boring, but it's a pretty cool way to look at things. Uh, OBD, typical oscilloscope, error tab, it lets you know about, you know, lets you know if there's anything going on wrong. OBD. 
You can choose to look at long term and uh, short term fuel trims or just long terms. Some, it just depends on the vehicle. Uh, the Toyotas, uh, we found the long terms work better. Uh, some of the domestic ones, uh, we leave it on both. Um, just depends on you know, uh, personal preference and, and the vehicle and the year and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, leave it up. We put this OBD on automatic, so when you plug it in, it'll automatically turn green up here and tell you what kind of OBD you're looking at. And then uh, OBD ad adaptation. We'll move this to fast so that it's constantly looking, and this will explain it. Change every slow changes after every ignition switch on, fast every one second. So we want fast. Okay. Petrol trims, correction inverted, no. Then basic controller and firmware information. So this turns out turned out to be a little bit of a longer introduction, but um, we hope you liked it. Uh, this is going to be the easiest software you ever use, and uh, look at our other videos to uh, to see it in action. Thanks.